Hello, hello, and welcome to Simulacra Studios Presents Trinity Continuum Aeon Varg for Salvation, the finale of the campaign. Woo! I, I am your humble story guide, Scott, and I am going to throw it to Sean to start the introduction wheel. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Kreef. I am playing Wu Sasar, the Upeo Wamako teleporter who has a serious um, hatred of all things aberrant and is hoping to um, keep his friends safe for just a little bit longer. And I'm going to pass it down to uh, Jonathan. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jonathan. Um, I am going to be playing uh, Rafael Alvarez Castillo, um, the group's secret talent, um, hacker and nerd extraordinaire, and uh, determined to be able to make it back to Earth to be able to go on his first date. Um, <laughs> and with that, I'm going to toss it to Josh. Hey, everybody. I'm Josh Heath. I am playing Looks Upward Toward the Stars and Sees Danger Ear Laugh Set and Destroys More Quickly Known as Laughs. Um, Delta Operative Laughs is a listener, a space psionic starfish being, and I just love saying that. Uh, I had thought I was going to get a starfish costume for this character at some point while playing, but I could not find one that was either not outrageously expensive or not uh, completely ridiculous looking. And I was willing to go rid ridiculous if it was cheap, but You, you anyway. couldn't find a Patrick Star? Uh, it just it was like... $96 or something like that. And I was like, no, that's a, a step too far for this. Um, but that said, um, lapses pronouns are they, them, and I'm going to kick it to uh, our uh, to Nigel. Hello, everyone. My name is Nigel O'Rear. I will be playing Flight Lieutenant Jude Fletcher this evening uh, for the final time, um, uh, at least for this game. Who knows? Um the resident superior and uh, uh, functioning uh, alcoholic of the uh, of the group. Um, my pronouns, as well as Jude, uh, Jude's, are uh, he, him. Um, and uh, I will pass it on to, I think only one person hasn't gone. I think so. So. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that leaves me. Uh, I am James. I will be playing Staff Sergeant Logan McCall, the... Ex-con, not really a con anymore, kind of released to do this and then probably going back to prison if he ever sets foot on Earth again. I don't know. Um, he, uh, his pronouns are he, they, as are mine. Um, and I'm ready to light things on fire because I'm pyromaniac. All right. And because we forgot, my pronouns are he, him, although I play varied, varied uh, uh, genders and, and identities and that's you are as, the world. And I, as I am the world, and the world contains multitudes. Likewise, he, him, my apologies, so is Raphael. Uh, same, yes. Okay. He, so, him, and he, him. When we last last left our heroic squad of Varg pilots, uh, they, had in, they had launched from their secret uh, psionic hideaway within the Vega system uh, with a plan in hand to sneak their way onto Vega Prime uh, and... Uh, plant a psionic beacon uh, that will allow the clairsentience back in the soul system to analyze and catalog all of the colony's secrets uh, as a prelude to invasion. Uh, they, Like I said, they've got a plan in hand uh, and are launching through their, uh, their teleportational aperture uh, back into the solar system of the Vega system. Uh, so we are using the Goliath system here to to get us to the point where they get boots on ground. Uh, and we have gone through the planning stages. Now we are into the transport stages. Uh, so the next four or five, uh, we are, okay, I'm sorry, we are four milestones out of 13 uh, to pull this off and get boots on Vega in the right place. Uh, so the planning stages took four milestones. Now we are in transit. Uh, so, uh, who would like to take the first milestone, which is really going to be about positioning and like getting yourselves ready for um, your approach to Vega Prime? Uh, who would like to describe and overcome this challenge? 
I'd like to ask a further question, if I can. When you talk sure. about positioning, are you talking about avoiding obstacles, finding the right uh, way to approach, or are you talking about actually moving around said things? Uh, let's go with let's go with the first first set of of things. Like you're you're actually like plotting the course in real time uh, now that you're in system and you have direct telemetry. Okay, I think um, that's still in lapses court but i don't know if anyone else has a so i my the superior power um superior processor mm -hmm. states that i can automatically overcome one milestone when dealing with math physics or mapping would that be applicable to the goliath system in general and if so to this particular instance um yeah since it's that specific i will definitely say that you can just use that superior power uh to um uh, to once now that you're in system, you have basically plan plan meets uh, action, uh, complete the rest of those equations, uh, and without the need of a role actually, because that is super super potent in this situation because these roles are all difficulty five. Yes, are y'all okay with me doing that? Yeah, seems like a good use of it. Yep. Saving our resources for later. Yep, for sure. I thought I was going to be the one I would have to. That would be the best of this because I have spatial sense, but I, I'm glad I didn't have to do it. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so yeah, so the you basically marry real time information with your uh, your uh, the rest of your your planned coordinates, uh, and you have found your sort of you have identified your insert vector. Uh, now it's the matter of getting uh, getting the transport ship that has all of your vargs telekinetically tethered to it into that uh, vector and this is definitely going to be making a pilot roll uh who would like to make this pilot roll so my pool is eight and i've got i think a uh let's see big guns blades where i'm not, no. not to cut not to cut you off but i am i am instituting the rule that you can't do two in a row oh well never mind then ha <laughs> ha my piloting pool is also eight. Mine is a nine. Um, Mine's or potentially ten. a ten. God <laughs> damn it. Somebody um, else take it. <laughs> so okay. could be could be either uh my laughs or um a call, and I that's good either way. Unless we're resisting G's, then mine is like a five. I'm just double checking a gift real quick to see if it has anything to assist. It does not look like it does. So it would really just be a straight roll for me. Um, do, do, where's my... There's Discord. That is five on the nose. Okay, so McCall takes the wheel. Uh, he takes he, he transfers control of the transport's uh, navigation to his console. Uh, and it's it's a rough one. There's no uh, no uh, uh, leeway to spare, uh, but you manage to get yourself into a vector uh, that essentially um, uh, pilots you around a large uh, in-system asteroid that basically provides a gravity assist uh, to get you in so that you don't have to... So we slingshot. In. Yeah, you slingshot around it so that you're not coming under uh, under propulsion. Which might be detectable, more detectable than just an an object uh, slinging towards the the planet. For for all the other sensors in, in system, unless it, like passive system, we look like just another space rock. Yeah, and a very small one uh, to be you know, for all things considered. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you managed to get that. Uh, so that is uh, another two milestones down. Uh, so we are at seven of thirteen. Um. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, you are a you are a rock. Um, uh, next is going to be, and uh, I'm going to start noticing because now you guys are starting to come within sort of the 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 sphere of influence of Vega Prime, and uh, this is definitely noticeable to the Scions or Psi Active in the group. Um, but uh, uh, the other two do notice that uh, sort of that vitakinetic uh, uh, fluid that fills all of your your uh cat your cockpits 
mm-hmm. starts to warm up a little bit. Like you, see, like it's kind of like a frog in a pot scenario. You don't actively notice it until you see like temperature readings uh, on on some of your consoles. So it actually starts to heat up a little bit, um, and uh, even that that sort of bulwark that it gives against you is going to make this consider a light quantum flux zone uh, for the purposes of psi rolls. Uh, mm-hmm. And it very well may get heavier from th- from this point on. Uh, so, yes, so you are a floating rock, um, and you are starting to pick up on uh, sort of the... the uh, your sensors are starting to pick up off, like, radio communications, um, uh, you know interference from just the general like powerful radiation um and other things so uh yeah your systems are starting to get a little patchy uh and you you want to make sure that you're in tight control of your own communications so i'm going to need a technology role from someone to uh, manage the sort of the the general interference that is getting pushed your way someone and then all heads turn towards jonathan yep (laughs) yeah that would be me all right, here we go. Just come on, dice roller, do the thing. That is five, six, wait, no, that's another 10. One moment. <laughs> Five successes. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, you do a quick patch job. Uh, you consult with your onboard SI or AI now uh, yeah. uh, to start managing the sort of the interference and the systems. Uh, working in simpatico with one another, you, you are able to to patch everything uh, so that the interference doesn't cause much damage and that you don't start leaking uh, things from your own communications. Uh, so yes, the uh, you are reaching visual range where your scanners uh, are starting to pick up detail around Vega, uh, and you are once again. This is one of those scenarios where your plan has to incorporate real time data. Um, uh, so as you are sort of plotting out, and you know generally where you're supposed to be on the planet, um, and you're starting to reach. Uh, that that uh, that vector uh, to where you're going to start to, you're going to have to burn so uh, to get uh, do a, basically a course correction to get you in line for where you need to go uh, and this is going to be a larceny role in order to do so stealthily so that you can get uh, course correct so that you can land where you need to be. Does anyone have larceny? I actually do. McCall's Street the criminal. criminal. <laughs> oh, wait, a, wait a here to the stereotype staff, Sergeant. <laughs> I was a street kid. I had to learn how to steal cars and shit. I, um, I mean, I'm not complaining to know this now. Only problem is you made our other role in this uh, uh, segment, as right? Long as, he's not one, as long as it's not in a row. Okay, cool, cool. I'm looking to see if I have anything that might apply to it, but I don't really have anything fancy, so it's just going to be a straight roll. Wait, uh, just, a, just a second. Um, Scott, you said this is about avoiding detection, yes. right? While I usually would totally agree that larceny makes a lot of sense, would it fit for laughs to be able to use some um psycho uh some clairsentience elements and some cunning to yeah, kind of I'll, I'll go around that and said i'll allow it you can make a psi okay. roll uh okay. note that this is going to be at plus one difficulty uh sure. because you're in a light quantum flux zone would Just that make it six difficulty it would make it six difficulty okay uh because yeah we were using milestones the the difficulty just lumps in all of the other other things that you're dealing with so let yeah, me yeah. let me pitch this as a instead of actually actively using clairsentience Mm -hmm. kind of understanding the way things work as a close combat fast planning Mm -hmm. type of uh of role where it's like if i were approaching this Mm -hmm. trying to be you know aggressive etc uh yeah sure i'll i'll allow that uh yeah that'll be fine you can do that 
Okay. And that will not incur the plus difficulty. Cool. I'm going to spend three Psy. Okay. Um, the reason being that I um, do not need to make a roll for this. But uh, this is favorable outcome that if I need a re-roll, I can do so mode dots plus successes. Actually, I do need to roll that. Mm. No, I will not do that. I will just I mean, roll you, this you straight. Can do so, you can do so in, in preparation. Okay. Just note that that difficulty will apply. Cool. That's only two successes on that, so one uh, success. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me update your momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, that is a failure. Uh, well, I don't that think... hmm? that would only that's only oh. for the favorable outcome. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. so okay, that's just fair. so okay. I can uh, get a reroll if I need to. Okay. This is much better. Two. Three, four, five successes. Okay, you got it. So yeah, you're able to make this burn in a quick, stealthy way that uh, that you know plots out. Um, uh, however, unfortunately, uh, you even though you're on the right vector, you just so your sensors start to blare up with uh, enemy contact, uh, like as a patrol of what seems like sort of autonomous drones uh, enters into your, uh, they're going to be passing right through your vector uh, and will no doubt detect and engage you unless you're able to take them out quickly. Uh, so this is definitely going to be some sort of combat role to wipe out these motherfuckers. I got this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the shuttle's not armed, right? Um, the shuttle's not armed, but you are in your Varg. Okay. Uh, and you can use your weapons to do so. Yeah, I will use said weapons to do so. Major coil gun reporting for duty. <laughs> Blow it up. I was going to just teleport them all away, but this is much more fun. <laughs> Uh, eight. Eight successes. You, in a flash of weaponry and uh, uh, kick-ass, you know, space explosions that shouldn't happen, but ha happen anyway, uh, you pop all of these drones right in the moment before uh, their sensors pick you up uh, and uh, presumably uh, inform planetary security about what's going on. Path uh, is clear, fellas. Remind right. me not to piss you off, Wu. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so that I believe is going to be uh, eight milestones, or am I mistracking? We did one, two. Uh, that was yeah, no, we're, five. No, we're on, yeah, mm. we're on. So we're on nine total milestones. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to be the clutch point. This is th this is the time when you guys need to uh, deploy your distraction. Uh, because you don't, you know that even you know as far as you've gotten without any problems, you can't just enter right to the base of the spire uh, of the of the colony citadel uh, without some sort of distraction. Uh, now I know that there was talk about a nuke uh, being deployed for such purposes, but if you, anyone has another idea and want to hold the nuke for something else, that is up to y'all. But who would like to create this distraction for the final approach? If we're going for the nuke, I I would say me, because I'm the demolitions expert. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, where are you? What what? Uh, and I need to know this for for later purposes. How? So, as you're sort of beginning to resolve the city, I'll give you a better um, better mm -hmm. layout of it. Uh, so, obviously, the most most um, noticeable thing is the spire. And you are just now beginning to be able to see the form of the colony uh, above the planet itself, sort of right above the spire, mm -hmm. barely out of atmosphere. Um, and below is this 
massive, sprawling semi-grid. It's not a perfect grid, but it is uh, laid out pretty, pretty regularly, pretty systematically of just like nearly identical cube shaped buildings. Um, uh, at the edge, you see that there is like a, a, a ring of other facilities that look different, um, that may have various different purposes. Um, uh, but yeah, that's the general setup of what's going, what you're seeing as you're coming into view and your sensors are starting to pick up data from the planet. Um, now we had discussed not nuking the city itself, but somewhere outside of the city, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, I, my brain is telling me, throw it at the colony, do it. <laughs> um, but I yeah. don't think that will be very do, effective. Do you remember that scene in Mars Attacks? Uh, <laughs> yeah. when, when they send out like this tiny little ship and it like takes the, the, the nuclear explosion into a little balloon and then they smoke it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what would happen. Yeah. No, L literally I, that's what would happen. That's, that's, that's what my brain was saying, but I'm like, no, no, bad. Um, uh, Scott, look... I have a question real quick. Sure. Can we use two milestones on the nuke? Um, sure. Yeah, we can. If you want to, if you want to maybe plan this out a little bit better before firing it. Well, I was, I was going to ask, you know, if Logan wants to prime it, I can deliver it somewhere not in our pass. Ooh. Because we don't have a missile, correct? No, yeah, you just have a warhead. Correct. So yeah. that uh, given given the general level of crazy space tech that the Eon Society uh, has access to, um, would it be reasonable to say that the warhead is somewhat programmable in terms of like shaped charge? Yeah, yeah. You, well, absolutely. I had already gone through. Uh, yeah. I had already yeah. gone through and done uh, the maximized detonation on it, mm -hmm. which I believe we had selected the third option of decrease armor rating of any stationary object the bomb is designed to destroy or blow a hole in by two. Mm -hmm. um, so Logan would be looking to throw it at something that looks somewhat built up and more protected other than the spire. Um, um, okay, let's uh, let's we'll we'll take it we'll we'll insert a milestone before this, um, and say if you guys want to make a like a, uh, tech, or a culture roll, one of those sort of determine like what because like, like I said, a lot of the city looks very like identical to one another. There are mm -hmm. facilities on the outer edges of it. If you want to make a tech roll to determine what might be the best uh, one of those outer facilities to lob it at. Um, that would be a good thing to do. Tech roll, everybody, again, looks down at John. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Well, Give me I can do, um, I've got Culture 3, and I've got, um, well, no, mili Military History is a culture uh, specialty. Yeah. Damn it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I got, I got very little I can contribute directly to this. All right, well, let's, let's go ahead with the tech roll then to kind of narrow it down. Oh, hit, right hit, where's, hit where there's the most people. Or where there's the most, like, infrastructure. Yeah, that's yeah we're just actually... looking for a better target, basically. Actually, now that... on on those lines, maybe not even the the destructive yield is where this could cause the most damage, but the biggest EMP disruption. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm I'm definitely down to to do this. Um, Since they have so much advanced technology, I'm assuming EMP is probably not going to be a huge deal for them. It might be, but big old fireballs gonna ruin anybody's day. Yeah, but anyway, let, let, let's go ahead and get that tech roll then. Okay, <clears throat> load up. Moment. That is, again, five successes. On the dot. You scan, you start looking for, through communications. Um, uh, Mako, Matoko is uh, like, uh, you try, you're trying to like ping her for a bit, but she's like clearly in, in some, the grips of some pretty intense concentration herself. Uh, mm -hmm. As like, she just says like an enemy AI in combat. 
Um, uh, but you scan through the transmissions, you kind of analyze things, and you identify what you're pretty sure is their spaceport. So we're eating it at the spaceport. Marking your target now. <laughs> Please stand by. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, so that is the 10th milestone. Um, uh, and yeah, so what? Uh, so yeah, you guys have a target now for your nuke. Uh, now it's about to deploy it. Now, like I said, you, you can want probably me to roll aim or yeah. This will this will definitely be an aim roll, or if you mm -hmm. want to try and teleport it there so that it doesn't give away your position, um, uh, that would be two options to go with. Well, well I mean, should... since it doesn't have a warhead, I don't know how much giving away our position it, or it has a war. It is just a warhead. It doesn't have a missile. Mm -hmm. um, well, it presumably we would really be... kind of just be like. <laughs> yeah but i, mean, I think it, teleporting it might be the better bet admittedly um i have a just, thought though um because I, and i'm curious Wu can create a portal right it might be useful to create a portal and have laughs run it somewhere where it's even more likely within that uh, area to cause um a big boom and then have him run back to the portal. I'm not. I'm not great at portals. By not great, how? How not great? Um, actually, I just realized I have in a flux zone. Portals. Shoot it if I portals have to. are probably not. Not our best option. Not going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I don't. You you've got the reconfigurable Varg. Yeah, you like it. I was assuming you would you would reconfigure some sort of launcher, which, as I said, gives the gives the football a trajectory. That sure. could be followed. Yeah, I mean, I think portals would probably be the best, but given the flux zone, it's better to just rely on the tech we have. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, if you want to so, just fire it, that will definitely be an aim roll. Yeah, yeah. It's I only have seven dice for the teleport. I was going to say my only other option would be to use the the velocity telekinesis and just like, and suddenly gun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if that's just an aim roll, that is... What's your aim pool? Uh, very high. Sure. <laughs> I built him to be very good at the combat thing. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. What did this one do? Sorry, I gotta double check this edge that I keep forgetting what it actually does again. It's the uh, variable gravity combat training. Um, you get plus one enhancement. Okay, so yeah, as long as I get a single success, I'll get an enhancement. On. I think you would you would ignore a complication too, but yeah. we don't have any that I'm aware of. Yeah. Not not at the moment. Uh, that would make it six successes. Six successes. You arc that thing straight to the spaceport. Uh, and there is a massive flash of light, uh, and a, don't look uh, at the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shields automatically go up uh, as their spaceport gets lit the fuck up, um, and you start to. But yeah, just the the communications start to go absolutely haywire uh, as the EMP washes over the things. It's not as effective as it would be, in, say, against modern technology. That certainly causes a, a wave of disruption uh, that does get sort of it, it causes some after effects, but it does not completely wipe out their comms or their their tech tech base. But it does cause a big ass boom. Uh, and you guys start to see um, a great deal of activity start to spring up. Several of those identical buildings uh, start to sort of like crack open. Uh, as they open up and like things start to pour out of them, uh, and you know you see uh, Wu, you're able to detect multiple like warps uh, start to manifest themselves um, uh, in the uh, probably going over to where that is, um, uh, and yeah, so the it causes a great deal of distracting activity. Save uh, point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Your game is auto saving. You're that in that power. When yes, when things start like cracking, mm -hmm. save point. It gives us four minutes at least. I don't know if that'll matter, but you know, just in case. Okay. So 
Uh, now we have come to, I believe that is our um, 11th milestone. Uh, yes. So we've got two left. So now it comes for the clutch pilot roll to get to, to basically get to the ground uh, without running into one of these like flurries of activities uh, and get you guys close to the point where you guys need to get to the football. Uh, so basically this is your ground insertion roll, uh, which will be a pilot roll. Shouldn't you be really good at this? Um, laughs. Uh, your laughs is very, very good at this. Yes. Psycho uh, location and piloting. Yep. Peanut butter and jelly. Yep, exactly. So I am going to Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So five successes and three enhancement from various things. Excellent. You manage the transport. Um, this is basically, this is the point where the transport does a, um, a flyby, uh, like getting like close to one of the central buildings near the Citadel and disengages. It's uh, basically uh, drops all of the Vargs. Um, uh, so you guys are incoming. You are falling towards the ground. Uh, you know, those of you who have thrusters are able to like grab the grab the vargs of those who don't so that you can manage the landing um but yeah now we are we are going to run into the point where you cannot hide where you are uh they do just they do see you and automatic defenses start to target you uh in an attempt to blow you out of the sky uh, before you hit the your vital point uh and so this is definitely going to be another sort of combat role uh to anyone who would like to take it in order to uh, maneuver, destroy some automated defenses, uh, and punch your way through to the landing zone. Can I literally punch it? I mean, if you if want. If you want to be the one to do it, do it. <laughs> My own, I was going to say, uh, the only thing I can do is, like, throw out a kinetic shield, maybe, to just, to their defensive zone hit us, but... Uh, and I will say, at this point, we are now in a medium quantum flux zone. Uh, as the temperature in your, of your vitakinetic liquid is gross. Yeah, it is starting to get gross. Little bubbles are starting to form as it attempts to counteract the flux, uh, the quantum flux in the area. Uh, but yeah, so who would like to deal with these these uh, active defenses uh, to get you guys onto the your point zero? Let me check how many enhancement I have on this still. Uh, seven. Okay, yeah. You rain down fire, uh, taking out automated defenses, punching a hole uh, literally through like a shielded uh, com shielded component, uh, and you guys land not too terribly far from the base of the Citadel. And without a single failure, we have completed this Goliath. Yeah. Woo! Cesar! Yeah. Uh, so, yes, you guys are within, uh, you have sort of, you are had already sort of plotted out where you should do in general, where you need to put the beacon in order to hit, so that its edge hits that secret compartment under the citadel, uh, and no doubt reveal not only that area, but a great percent of the citadel. Uh, I need everyone now to roll me initiative. Uh, yes. So that is, once again, the lower of your dex plus empathy, uh, or your cunning plus athletics. Let me know when you got that. Five? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Uh, so far, a four on the die pool of four. Mm -hmm. um, okay, three. I'm trying to remember. It, or do we, is it adding it up or taking the, the highest number of it, the die that we... Uh, no, it, it is is highest. It's number of successes. Okay, two. Sorry. Okay, so you got a two. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For something I have eight dice in, I roll very poorly on initiative and got one. One, okay. Uh, uh, I got a total of five. Total of five, awesome. Four and total of five. 
All right, that is it. All right, so you guys have made landfall. You are within, I will say, uh, you guys are within long range of the insertion point, of the place where you know is the ideal spot to uh, land the, plant, plant the beacon. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a couple of special rules for this combat. Uh, the first is the beacon itself. Once planted, it will require six rounds to calibrate. Um, so long as one PC uh, is, is functional, not taken out, and is within short range of that beacon, the beacon is considered protected. No matter what else you guys do. So long as so there is someone within the vicinity, I will consider that beacon sacrosanct to, to anything. Uh, the second is that we will have uh, a horde of sub-aberrant mutants coming for your ass, uh, and we are going to be using scene combat rules for dealing with them. Uh, what scene combat rules basically says that um, you roll against essentially a static difficulty, uh, and any successes over that difficulty, each success takes out a, um, a minion. Uh, if you fail your roll when dealing with them, you just automatically take one damage. Mm. Uh, and I will say, uh, in we're using that basically for, for dealing with, with them, uh, so they don't ever roll against you. Um, mm. I will say, however, every round someone has to deal with the minions. If no one deals with the minions in a given round, you all automatically take one damage. Gotcha. Uh, so those are the special rules for this one. Um uh, so you have, you, like I said, you are in long range, uh, a, as soon as you kind of like make, make ground fall and start to scan, uh, one of these large, like stadium size cube buildings, uh, cracks open, uh, and a horde of what you are intellectually know were once people, uh, and from what you know about the system, probably, farmed from birth uh to the point where they could endure conversion into a corrupt into a subaberrant mutant uh start to pile out they are just each one of them is a monstrosity of flesh and cancer uh that you know defies description each one of them is, is no, no one looks identical to the other uh but they are pouring out of this building uh coming for you all uh, so, uh, I have a player turn. Uh, I would like to go so that I can use my tactician power to give everyone a floating pool of enhancements. Okay. Uh, That's for me. Okay. Okay, go ahead and do that. So, I need to make a close combat plus resolve roll. Mm -hmm. um, so, that'll be seven dice. Uh, and I get no enhancement on that ba based on its own. Um could I apply a military history specialty to this? Sure. Yeah, you could. You could uh, envision a a, a Zerg rush uh, from ages past, or Vargs, uh, yeah. or morale. If any of those are more appropriate, uh, I would say. Mm, what um, What are your skill rating? Like, like what does, would one give you a better bonus? Um. No, all of those are all at three skill. Okay, so yeah, any, any and all, any of those would apply. Okay, so close combat plus resolve is 7d10. Let me roll that first. Come on, Google, don't suck. Oh, here we go. That's two successes, one of which is a 10. And that's a six. So that's two plus however much my uh, specialty gives me. That, that'll be one enhancement. So three successes uh, are now in a pool that people can pull from that will translate into enhancement for, um, uh, it doesn't specify how long it lasts. We'll just uh, say the combat. Okay. So that is what I spend my turn doing. Like my display lights up with like tactical information tracking and I start like firing off little like bits of information like you go here, you do this, whatever. And to like optimally distribute ourselves for the coming horde that um okay so uh we have a second player turn uh i will let uh Wu cesar know uh that you are beginning to through your senses feel the formation of a warp point somewhere close by okay 
Can I take a mixed action? If you feel feel <laughs> so inclined. I would like to use um, spatial integrity and uh, true awareness from Empty World to both block them and increase my own uh, perception of the universe so that I can better kill okay. them. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead and make that roll. Uh, let me double check the work, the ruling of that. Is there like a roll off with that? It, I think it just increases. Uh, let me gives them a complication, and if they do not bite off, it knocks them off course. Got it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let me know what that complication is. And yeah, split up your successes appropriately. Now, if I'm using my, if I'm doing this with my best pool, which is translocation, do I get favored mode? Yeah, if you if that if you're using it with that, then yeah. Ah, <clears throat> uh, only three. Sorry, okay. two because of the difficulty. Ah, no, sorry, one. Because of the difficulty. Uh, okay, so where do you put that success? Do you put it towards your empty world, or do you put it to a uh, empty world? Doesn't have a role. Oh, it doesn't have a role. Okay, fantastic. It just takes uh, an action. So just, okay. I did all I could. Okay, so you have a you, complication. You have three floating enhancement you can take if you want. Uh, I that's going to be enough to stop them from teleporting. With that, I don't think. I mean, just you using that power means I have to roll. Uh, sure. but... you, you know what, actually? Can I spend two momentum? Uh, Yeah, you can spend two momentum if the group agrees. Yep. Go for broke. This I would request that we that we keep at least one momentum floating around. Well, we have five. Right? Or, yeah, we have six. Six because, because of... of your because of your ability. Right, two more successes. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give me a three-point complication to open up this warp point, uh, which... Yeah, I'll just do that. Okay. Um, I... Let's see. In order to form this warp point, I would have to uh, to uh, buy off, uh, not buy off that complication. Uh, so they are going to not buy off that complication, and so a warp point does form, but it is not as close as they wanted it to be. Uh, Get out of my plane <laughs> of existence. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, but yeah, you feel that warp point, and you feel it is. It's maybe you feel that it is. Um, Within long range, but the wrong direction for it to be useful to them in terms of, of, of blocking you to get to the point. Uh, okay, so that is okay. So that is that initiative turn, uh, 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 and I have another player turn. One of us needs to deal with the horde. Yeah, they are incoming. I mm -hmm. I can take it if no one else wants to. Well, I've already gone. Um, because I, mean, I have a plan for what I was gonna do, but um, go ahead. I can... No, I know what my plan. Uh, no, no, originally. I mean not, not for not not my original plan was not going to be for combat. So this round, so I I will defer to you if we need whoever needs okay. to deal with um, them. Um, so as I was saying earlier, I would like to attempt to use Hellscape to apply sheath to all my allies because okay. extra armor is the goody good. Um, and when rolling Psy, it's side rating plus mode plus uh, favored mode, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yes. so lots of dice to roll. But because of the um, quantum flux a, zone we are in. Yeah, it is a difficulty, difficulty yeah. two. Plus two. <laughs> yeah, plus two, sorry. That is eight successes. Okay, so that is four um, uh, successes left over. 
which you can apply to whichever targets you you wish. Um, so I would like to apply them. I want to create a maze that these guys have to run to to get to us. I want to use the secondary part of sheath, okay, uh, which allows me to create walls of flame or ice that they physically have to either funnel through or if they can melt it, they can. Um, but basically, I want to delay the the minions as long as possible uh, okay. with the other four successes. Uh, okay, so yeah, you they run straight forward into this wall, um, uh, and you see like the first the first one just kind of like comes barreling through and just runs through. Uh, wait, is it, are you using fire or ice? Um, I would say I will be using. Um, ice okay so like the first one that comes barreling as you raise this maze of ice just gets like impaled uh <laughs> through like straight through on a spike of ice uh and the other ones like like get disconcerted and have to start maneuvering around it uh so yeah you have set up that uh thing as a way of dealing with the minions uh so uh as and I... as far as the armor that i applied to my allies mm -hmm. uh, i would actually like to say that i applied fire sheath to them mm -hmm. so y'all are surrounded by fire but it's not hot and it doesn't burn um because that gives us uh one hard or one extra hard and three soft armor which i feel like will be very useful indeed uh so please make note of that uh okay so yeah the minions have been delayed and uh, my uh, my actual aberrants are on their way, uh, so that but means I have another PC. Yeah, so that means I have another PC turn. So Laps would like to run with the beacon at, to where we want it to play, like okay. placed, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to just get there, that'll definitely be an athletics roll uh, to make your way to it. Uh, What's my difficulty, Scott? Uh, in this, um. I suppose that this is where the colony's paradoxical desire for order is going to do him uh, do him a disservice. <laughs> this is his his controlled metropolis. It's just like going down a city street. There's no there's just a regular difficulty for it. Fantastic. Then it is a zero difficulty um, because of uh, several of the edges that I have mm -hmm. um, to do this sort of thing. So I'm rolling just to roll. Yeah. Um, but I, I would like to do so to see if we can, um, you know, yeah, get any benefits from doing so. Uh, one success. So all I'm you glad. needed. I mean, yeah. you still could have botched. Yes. Um, but yeah, all you needed. You get to the beacon to the point. Uh, it's it's maybe about a quarter mile from the base of the spire. Uh, you know, you had it like holographically targeted on your on your console. Uh, on your heads up display uh, and you you spike that football uh, like vines start to like crack open and, and start to plant itself into the ground uh, and you all get a a ping on your heads up displays uh, of beacon implanting beginning calibration uh, so next round will be the first of six rounds that it needs to calibrate uh, and I have another PC turn I believe I'm the only one left. I think you were right. Uh, I would like to spend a point of inspiration, and okay. I would like to activate Chess Master okay. for my allies. All right. So, uh, is there a role associated with that, or do you just do it? There is not. I just do it. Uh, the Chess Master and a number of allies equal to their command gain access to a new defense st stunt outwit for the rest of the scene. Um, mm -hmm. You have two uh, added to your uh, defense. Okay, so I, I, if I recall correctly, they need to spend a success to gain plus two to their defense, right? Um, yeah, it's equal to a certain yes. facet of his. I don't yeah. remember which one. Uh, it's equal to half of my reflexive, reflective facet rounded up. Okay. Um, and it is you spend one success, you get that. Uh, okay, so yeah, so it's a it's a two for one deal. Yeah, yes. Your first, one so basically, one. yeah, your first success counts for two. Yeah, uh, when rolling defense, it's useful. Uh, okay. Um, 
All right, so that is that. I still uh, do not have any other aberrants but minions on the board. Uh, and we are in the first round of calibration. Uh, so, top of the round, uh, I have a PC turn. Who would like to go? I would like to claim it because mine's pretty easy. I'm just running to catch up with laughs because we are working as a team to mm -hmm. make sure the, the beacon is safe. Okay. That and I can attack from pretty damn long range. Yeah. Now, I will say, although one of you has to, multiple people can try and try, try and, and winnow down this horde. I have a set number of checkboxes. Um, is it, is, will I still have to make the athletics roll to make it to him? Um, yeah, to get, to get to there, you would need to make an athletics roll, but you could split action that with, um, with an attack roll. Okay. If I went as far as normal movement would allow, yeah. would I still be able to turn and attack in that case? Yeah. Maybe not making it all the way to him. Yeah, absolutely. And you would still be within short range of the beacon. Uh, mm -hmm. which which fulfills the requirement of protecting it. Okay. But you would not be um, on top of the beacon. So both of my Varg weapons are short range. So uh, yeah, they're uh, every they are everywhere. Like they're you know Well they're, they're trapped up in the maze. Yeah they're trapped up in the maze, but they're still everywhere. Like they're like the, the these being they're they're gonna start coming from all directions. Okay. Um, um... I would like to go ahead and Fuck. um I'll have to use a power because I have a flamethrower equipped and that will melt my walls. Uh <laughs> brain. Um so yeah, I will go ahead and just use flash because it is simple and easy. Um okay. you also have guns. Well I have a pile bunker and a flamethrower, ah, okay. both of which are short range right now. Um, but you also have the reconfigurable weapon. But that takes an action. I'd rather use that action to attack with the power, especially because I have a ridiculous side pool. To okay, do it, it, do it, do it, do what you want, man. Um, Just know that it is at a plus two difficulty. Yes. Now, for using a power that is not your max mode dots, don't you get uh no uh no you uh, no. no yeah yes you get a, a enhancement equal to the difference between uh the power that it is and the total modes that you okay modes it's you an have. enhancement got it i couldn't remember what it is because space magic um yeah. so that would be seven total successes on a flash uh which is just me freezing people okay uh um, so uh yeah that you uh, send another blast uh, of uh, uh, is going to be heat or heat or ice this time. Freezing people. Freezing ice. People, yeah, you. I don't um, want fire near the walls of ice. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are. You blast through. You blast another one of these enemies uh, uh, coming in. Uh, that that interference with the with the sigh is really starting to like it's it's oppressive, mm -hmm. uh, and you're able to manage one clean shot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now uh, I need, uh, let's see here. Let's go with Logan. Yeah, Logan, let's say you're going to have to make a defense roll uh, as a blast of quantum energy comes from seemingly nowhere. Okay, now defense. Uh, defense is one of your resilience attributes. Okay. Resolve, stamina, or composure. Mm -hmm. And you have the option, uh, however many successes you roll, you can spend one of those on the special uh, defensive stunt that mm -hmm. uh, that Raphael gave us. So I got three. I'm going to go ahead and spend one so I have four successes on my defense roll. Four successes total on your defense, plus one. Uh, so you have a defense of five. Uh, okay. Well, let me do some math here. Uh, all that is enhancement. No. Um, uh, what is your soft armor? So with sheath, which adds a plus oh, shoot. Never, three. Never mind, this has the armor person quality. Uh, soft armor is ignored. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and what is your durability scale? 
Um, two. Two. Dark skill. Okay. So okay. So. Yeah. Mm, okay. So it's a plus one skill to you. Plus it's uh, uh. Okay. So it is going to because shop armor is, is ignored. Um. Uh, it is going to do a uh, point of damage to you. Um. Uh. And yeah, it's gonna add, yeah, it's, it's gonna end up doing two total points of damage to you. Uh, as this this scintillating, crackling beam of quantum energy just races through uh, from from a, a an unexpected angle and just impacts, cutting right through your psionic armor, uh, blasting at you. Do we get a shot from the side and everything turns mon monochrome and we just see an outline of him imp impaled by a beam? Ooh, what you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty uh pretty sudden. Uh, okay, but now I get a PC turn. Do do we see what did that? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Now that they've broken whatever stealth they have, I need to read the reading. I mean, they might be invisible still. That's true, but if they were just out of sight, we would at yeah. least know a trajectory. Yeah, you definitely have a trajectory. It's you know, uh, from everyone from, over the comms hears a loud "fuck" that hurt. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, it's definitely from the trajectory of where that portal was. Um, yeah, if someone wants to make uh, probably an aim roll to detect that trajectory, um, as part of their action. Um, but yeah, but. Fittingly, I have a PC actor. So yeah, if anyone wants to make like uh, yeah, make a, that kind of roll or another type of roll that they can pitch uh, to to try and detect the motherfucker. Um, actually, yeah, I would like to because I in fact have lightning calculator. Okay, yeah, that'll apply. Alrighty. One moment. So lightning calculator gives me two enhancement. And that is one moment. Fives are just my number today, guys. Oh, geez. Uh, so it's five and then plus two enhancement. Okay. okay, let me make a roll here real quick. Um, you scan the horizon, uh, you like rely on your, your scanners, um, and, uh, uh, you detect a shimmer on crawling, like, up the edge of one of the near, of the, the buildings, um, within long range now. Um, so yeah, you, you sort of, like, paint that holographically where, <laughs> where you find it, but you don't, you don't, you're not able to, like, pierce and see what it is, but you detect like like a you know the the stereotypical cinematic something inv is invisible here, shimmer in the air. Target markers set there. Just obliterate those fucking grid coordinates. Uh, at, whenever you're ready, I will make sure you don't see it anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I have another player action. Uh, I'll go and I'll just work on the on the horde. Okay. Like, I'll plant my, like, my Varg has not moved from the initial drop point, and I will just, like, plant, like, legs and bring the coil gun down, and anything that gets through the maze is just going to get vaporized. Cool. Uh, that will be um, aim. Yeah. Uh, and dex, so that is six, nine, with uh, the plus five enhancement from the gun. So... 9d10. One, two, three, four, five. Two of those are tens. Two of those both succeed. One of those is a 10, so that's seven with one more reroll. That's another 10. Eight reroll. And a three. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 total successes. Okay. You obliterate nine of them.
just under heavy coil gun fire as they start to break through the mazes. You just launch like rail after rail after rail of hyper accelerated uh, slugs blowing them apart. There's very little that a kilogram of solid tungsten cannot take care of when fired at relativistic speeds. That's very true. Uh, okay, I have another PC turn. So I'm going to have laughs um, supplement Jude's uh, attack with a lightning cannon barrage, uh, a spread of lightning cannon fire. Okay. Uh, make that roll. Okay. Now you're, you're at the beacon. I am. So you were at long range to these guys. That's true, but it goes up to long range. Nice. Okay. Okay. Five, six, and two tens. Eight. Eight successes. Plus four enhancement, I believe. Plus three enhancement. Plus three enhancement? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you light them up, uh, annihilating seven of them. It's a hot time. Uh, okay. Uh, and let me check my initiative here. Um, uh, coming around the corner... Uh, from the direction of where the portal is, um, a bulky mass of of uh, uh, like appears to be some unholy amalgamation of like plastic and metal and flesh. Uh, lumber rolls itself uh, into view. Um, uh, it comes in. It is at long range um, from you guys. Um, Hold on. So many different thingies up here. Uh, and let's see if it can make an attack at you guys. Um, yeah, it actually can. Uh, so, yeah, it is uh, going to um, open up this, like, uh, uh, cavity in its chest uh, and uh, a bunch of shards of, like, plastic and metal uh, start uh, firing out of it uh, towards Jude. Uh, please roll your enhance your uh, defense, please. Okay. I'm going to roll composure, which is 3d10. That is a failure, but not a botch. Uh, okay. So, yeah, you still have one defense then. Um, okay. Um, two. Hmm? Two. He's two. a superior. Oh, that's right. You're a superior. Fantastic. Um, uh, unless you want to spend some momentum to try and take advantage of that uh, the the outwit stunt. Mm. Up to you. Um, no, I, I won't. You won't? Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so you have a defense of two. Uh, and let me roll for this beefy boy. And what is your durability scale? Uh, two, Varg scale. Two, Varg scale? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so four. Minus... What's your soft armor? My Varg's soft armor is uh, plus three from the sheath and two, so five total. Five total? Uh, okay. So it is able to... Um... Uh, it is able to score a hit on you. It does one damage to you. Um, and as these shards of uh, uh, of plastic and metal uh, pepper around the area, uh, <clears throat> well, each one of them just sort of like when it when it when it hits just like a piece of road or a piece of debris, it just sort of it expands the size of what it hits. Uh, so that means that the um, uh, area in um, short range around Jude is now difficult terrain. Gotcha. Um, my uh, uh, sheath also gave me one hard armor, so that is what is ablated away. I'm no longer like, that just isn't there anymore. 
You're not hard anymore. Right. He's lost um, hardness. Uh, but I still maintain the soft enhancement, correct? Yes. The soft oh. maintain, maintain the soft armor, yeah. Okay. So I like just dramatically I try to like get out of the way of the attack with my with my boosters, but it's just it tracks me too easy and I get peppered. Indeed. Uh I have a player turn. I think I'm the only one left. Mm-hmm. All right, so what? how far am I from the Shimmer? Uh, you are long range from the Shimmer. Well, that's... Long range, that might be too close. Long range too close. Uh, no, friends, it's... you say. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, it's, it's not just extreme, it's medium to extreme, okay. All right. Um, shimmy, shimmy, ah, shimmy, ah, shim away. And uh gonna rack out the anti-material cannon. Pop off a nice aimed shot. Um six successes. Uh okay. Uh what is the power scale of this attack? May I spend a momentum? Go ahead. Four. Four? Excellent. Uh so that makes you one above. Uh, so that will, uh, okay. So six successes, you said? Yes. Okay. So that plus two for the, for the scale. Um, uh, and let's see. Ah, I see. Okay. Um. It's also brutal, deadly, and piercing. Okay. Oh, did that, did that, did you take the brutal of the heavy into account with the scale? Yes, I'll, I have uh, extreme okay, force, right, you, but okay, yeah, okay, I did it, count that. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Um, uh, hold on. So, uh, what happens is uh, you uh, you utterly destroy that area. Uh, you know, that shimmer, whatever it was, not there anymore. Uh, it just you know, when when the smoke clears, there's a giant hole in the building, uh, and you uh, lose track uh, of the the targeting reticle uh, that was painted on it. That's probably fine. So yeah, uh, pull the rifle off of the back, aim a quick shot. Doing it one handed because it's a mech. Mm -hmm. All right, Raphael, and problem solved. It's an anti-material rifle for a reason. Everything is a material. Uh, okay. Uh, I am going to make a mixed attack here because uh, they need to get in. Well, hold on. Let me look at their stats real quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, a uh, coming out at a slightly different angle from where the the, the big meaty thing is, a, a little floating basketball sized thing just kind of hovers its way in into view, um, and then it unfolds itself into a uncountable billions uh, upon billions of like spider leg filaments that begin to just occupy space. Uh, it wraps around buildings, it moves out into a, um, uh, into the, uh, the the square that you guys are going on. It is becomes very difficult to see an area of, of this field of battle that does not contain some little filament of this sort of spidery leg-like thing. Um, uh, and it is going to uh, make a attack using one of these filaments uh, coming right at Lucizar. Okay. So please roll your defense. On it. Uh, no successes. Okay. Uh, so defense is one with the soft armor of seven and a plus three complication. Uh, okay.
uh so it does not it it uh uh it does okay so so one of these tendrils uh comes out uh and touches you um uh just sort of uh, straight, uh, uh strokes itself against your armor and I am going to need a roll from you to resist something. Oh, all right. And did did it buy, did it buy off the complication? Uh, yes, it did. Okay, that sucks for me, but um, I'm trying to see what, what the resistance roll of this is. Thanks. Blow it up. There doesn't appear to be a resistance roll for this. Um, I am going to spend a corruption to do it, though. Um, I can even roll, though. Successes. Uh, your dexterity, uh, your might, your athletics, and your aim all go down by one. Uh, what does this feel like? Uh, this feels just like corruptive energy, just uh, coursing through, um, and just like affecting your body physically. In a very sort of direct and and violative way, uh, use mode an mode analog ruin. Um, so that's athletic dexterity, aim, and might. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and God, I'm surprised there's no resistance for that. Um, that's fucking horrible. Uh, okay, so that's that aberrant's go, uh, and I have another aberrant turn. Uh, let's see. What does she want to do? Um. Okay, that's what she does. Uh, oh, that's right. Never mind. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that aberrant is, does, is not able to get in range to do the thing that it wants to do. Uh, so we are at the top of the round. Uh, I have a... Uh... Okay, yeah, I got that. All right, so PC turn at the top of the round. So can I speak before anyone acts? Sure. Don't let it touch you. I'll try and keep it busy. Just please, please stop it. If possible, group, um, laughs would like to use a creative mode version of clairsentience. Scott, my pitch here is um, looking at the entire scene that we have in front of us and trying to understand the most effective places for us as a team to be, to be defensive and protect uh, the beacon. So I'm trying to create a uh, soft or end or hard armor, depending on the materials around us, um, for us to block uh, attacks and things like that with. Uh, okay. Um, what uh, what mode are you attempting to use this off of? I am using psychocognition, mm -hmm. and I'm going uh, all the way up to the four dot favorable outcome. Okay. Favorable outcome usually being about you know uh, some re rolls and things like that, and I feel like it's a good way of saying understanding what the uh, the battlefield looks like for us to be in the best position to not get smacked. Okay. So, um, and uh, you have that that mode dot, right? I do, yes. Okay, so uh, this will be at a plus one difficulty uh, mm -hmm. to attempt to, to use this mode creatively in addition to the plus two difficulty uh, for uh, the quantum flux zone. Um, and successes over difficulty will be cover that you can um, hand out. So that is a base three difficulty from what I heard from you. Okay. Yes. 
just double checking, I'm hearing right. Um, if the group is okay with it, I would like to use some momentum here. Could I use two momentum on this? Actually, can I use three momentum on this? I know that Nigel wanted one. I don't know if he still needs it. Um, he, I would like to just have that in reserve, uh, but sure. I don't think that's going to be enough to spend it. We've got six at the moment, so. No, we don't. Oh, we don't. We have three. Okay. Ah, then I would like to use mm, two momentum. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. Oh yeah, and you do still have an enhancement pool from um from uh Jude's ability. You yes. do. It's three, and you can pull that from pull from that whenever. Cool. Three. Um so I got three successes. I would like to use two of that enhancement. Um so that we can actually get some benefit from this. Okay. All right. So you have two points of cover you can hand out. Uh, at this point, I would like to remind you all of your reveries uh, that you guys still have access to. Yes. Uh, if you want to enhance your roles in that manner. Uh, okay. So uh, that's a PC turn. Uh, I have an aberrant turn. Let's see what she can do. She's good. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. Uh, I need, let's see who has this one. Uh, I need, uh, Logan. Um, I need you to make, let's see, what kind of role do I want this to be? I need you to make, um, let's call it an integrity roll. An integrity roll? Yeah. Okay. A skill that I haven't used. I actually have a lot of integrity. Wow, I kind of forgot. Um, anything particular you would want it to be paired with to resist, I'm assuming, this effect? Um, or I would say probably like either... Cunning would probably be the most appropriate for this. Okay. Uh, but if you wanted to do like resolve, would also might might work better. Work as well. Cunning's my, uh, the, the the better role for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want to come on. Type the right thing here. That is four successes. The dice are being kind to me. Four today. successes. That's quite. Good. Um, okay. So, uh, you, as you're sort of maneuvering around, as you're getting this information from laughs about like optimal position, mm -hmm. um, uh, you start to move into a, a place that seems to be advantageous. Uh, when you see like the shadow of the building that you're going to be moving into looks wrong. Um, and you are able to avoid stepping in it uh, as it rears up and is going to make an attempt to envelop you. Oh, uh, boy. So I need you to roll my, your defense, please. Oh, boy. Logan died on his way back to his home planet. <laughs> I mean that uh, that ironically would fulfill his long term aspiration. <laughs> Death is not going back to prison. Um, that is three, three successes. Uh, okay, so that's a total of. Go four. ahead and spend one to make it four. Do um, not okay. get Kachi uh, master. Uh, okay, uh, one to make it four. Hmm. 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 Okay, uh, this shadow uh, is able to leap up and grab onto your Varg. You mm. are grappled. Uh, however, nothing happens to you at the moment. Um, I'm from... getting an, a, a nice tight hug. Yeah, you're getting a nice tight shadow hug. Uh, now I have a PC turn. What? Uh, we have 
spider ball um plastic belly man and shadow mouth left uh vis in your visual field you have those three yes okay uh does anyone have a plan if not uh, i will get this thing off of my face i can do that uh i'm gonna try and go punch it off of jude's face okay you mean logan yeah, it's yes. not on my face, it's on Logan Logan's. <laughs> oh, I, I, then I'm going to fail. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so. I am not penalized in close combat, but I am penalized in dexterity, which I'm assuming this is going to be based on. Yeah, if you're making, well, I mean, it is a close combat role, and you can pitch me whatever attribute you want to use. Well, usually he's a very defensive fighter, you know, sticking and moving with uh, stamina, but this is not that time. This is he's trying to punch it off of his friend without destroying said person. So unfortunately, I don't think that works. Okay. So his pool is not as good. But the dice are. Uh, three successes before enhancement. Uh, of which I have four, so seven. Seven is enough. You grab this thing and pull it off of Logan. Um, and you, you have it in your hands. It's this, like, it is a shapeless shadow thing uh, that is, is nonetheless you have found purchase on. Well, I was just trying to stab it with my pile bunker oh. Oh, and knock it off. With... Oh, okay. Um, I don't have so... hands. Oh, okay. That's fair. Okay, so you're actually, <clears throat> you are, we're attacking it. Yes. Uh, okay. Noted. Um, in which case, uh, what what damage type does your pile bunker do? Uh, Just straight ballistic, basically. Probably blunt damage. I know mine does. Uh, it's impact. Impact. Okay. Uh, what? Okay, what? <clears throat> how? What total successes did you get? Seven. I also have, um, destructive. Okay, destructive. That's that's good to note. Um, okay. Hmm. Seven successes. That's a difficulty. Um, yeah, you stab into it, uh, but you're not able to, yeah, revising my narration, you stab into it, but it doesn't seem like it does much to it. Um, okay. Uh, so that's a PC turn. Uh, I have another PC turn. Who wants to take it? Um, we have yet to deal with the horde this round. I will note. Yeah, I'll I'll just keep doing that since y'all are better suited to more specific things. I'll I'll like take kind of a step back and 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 look over. Uh, but I'll see that that Wu is helping Logan. So I'm like, okay, well, just and I'll just continue to light up the uh the, the horde. All right, do it. Uh, that is ninety six again. One, two, three successes, one of which is a 10. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight successes for my uh, my coil gun. Uh, okay. Uh, total with enhancement? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you blast through four more of them uh, as they, at this point, the mazes are, are there. They're, they've been able to like claw down and claw through the ice and they are like just pouring full force. Uh, so they have been dealt with for this round, though. Um, okay, uh, I have another PC turn. Um, I guess I can go. Um, hmm. So we have spooky shadow thing, and then we have the spidery filament nonsense correct yes and and big bulky boy and big bulky boy so we've got skin of evil big papa and space jam i'm down with it i hate you so much <laughs> <laughs> um which one made you hate me space jam <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, hmm. Am I able to target um, filament fucker um, without risking hitting Wu? Uh, so here's a good thing about filament fucker. He's everywhere. Okay, well. Yeah, I that's, believe that's, we've we've dubbed him Space it's not Jam. A good thing. Yeah. Uh yeah, he is in fact everywhere. Uh, okay. So um uh if you want to just take an attack at him at one of his one of his many extensions, uh I would can... like to to have a little bit of fun with my smart missile launcher. Okay, yeah. Blow him this up. This sounds like the time. Yes, yes it is. Also, so I apologize for not nicknaming him Carl Sagan for his billions and billions. Billions and billions. Uh, Why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god. Them references, they're coming out. Uh, yes, they are. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a uh, attack roll, please. All righty. Come on. Sorry, dice rolling is taking forever. Uh, that is four successes on the dice, and I know we have a whole bunch of other things floating around. I'm not sure yeah, what, what, what they all the, are. What is the weapons enhancement? Uh, the weapons enhancement is five. Five, okay. So that's five And it has incendiary and massive explosive. That's, that's good to know. Um... That is actually very good to know. Um, uh, what is the... Uh, uh, does it have the heavy tag? It should. Missile launchers usually do. Um, I don't actually think this... It does. Uh, you said it's a smart missile launcher? Yes. Super sorry, guys. No problem. You're good. Um, no, it, it doesn't. Yeah, if yeah, it is straight out of the so. book, it does not. Okay. Yeah, it is straight out of the book. Okay, so you have not. So what what that means is that you are able to to hit it and crit it. Uh, so you blast through uh, and cause a you you burn away with your missiles. Uh, it is good that it has like an explosive quality because it being everywhere, uh, it has the colony ability and is very difficult to hit from like precise strikes. So a area of effect effect is very good. Uh, but yeah, you ch chunk through two of its uh, health levels, doing a good deal of damage to it. Uh, okay. Uh, so now I have another aberrant turn. Um, uh, Raphael, please roll your defense. And the defense roll one more time for it me. Is one of your resilience attributes. So composure... Uh, okay. Resolve or stamina. Got it. Oh boy. So that is, uh, hmm. Really wish I had thought to ask for a reverie before I had rolled those oh, dice. Yeah, I can remember those. Yeah. Oh well. Um I got I have one success. Okay. So you can use At that least. on your, your outwit. Yes. Uh so that I'm using that on my outwit. Um and then I have armor expert and I have the other uh myriad bonuses that we have floating around right now we have a lot <laughs> yeah okay uh what does armor expert give you armor expert. one extra one extra yes. okay uh so so yeah so that is three four um yeah if you want i believe there's one floating enhancement uh if you want to take that um to uh, put that up to five 
Everybody okay with that? Go ahead. Uh, that okay. All right. Now I'm going to yes. make my roll. So you have a five defense, and your durability scale is two. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, it is going to do some bad things to you. Uh, and, it's the bad touch. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, sorry. What is your soft armor? Uh, my soft armor. Armor as a base seven. is, huh? yeah. I was gonna say. I believe it's seven. Be seven. Yeah, it's seven right now. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay, so okay, all right, that is good. Uh, it does definitely is going to do one damage to you, um, uh, and it is also going to it's going to do a total of two damage to you. Um, uh, but it is also going to apply the stun condition to you as yet again, from seemingly nowhere, a scintillating blast of quantum energy, very familiar to the one that hit McCall, uh, rocks into you. Um, uh, and you have a two, uh, a, a two point compli stun complication on you um, that basically you have to buy that off or your action fails. So the next time you want to act, you have to spend, uh, in order to do anything, you have to buy off the stun complication um, with whatever dice roll you do. If you're unable to do that, then your action just gets eaten. Uh, okay. And that stays until you until you overcome that action. Uh, overcome Got it. That <laughs> uh, I have a PC turn. Who would like to go? Uh, that would be me, and I'm going to go ahead and call on my Society Path Reverie because uh, I need and, some extra help with this one. Okay, and what is the action that you are taking for this Reverie to enhance? So my goal is to use my Pile Bunker to blast this aberrant that has latched onto my face off of my face. Okay. So as you are readying your, you've, you've, uh, you've got your hand on the switch to engage the pile bunker. You, you're rearing it back with all of your might. Time slows down. Uh, we hear the, the, the lost whoosh and please set up the scene for us. So the scene we would find ourselves in, you would see a top down of a much younger Logan easily in his early teens um maybe not even that he is bloody and bruised scraped and cut up it looks like he just had one hell of a fight but lost as his best friend and fellow street gang member street crime kid uh jack comes up to collect his uh, to collect Logan from the ground. Uh, Jack will kind of like. Uh, are you like prone or are you st like sitting down? What where? What no, is he position? is he is like flat on his back. Okay, like he had just like he got knocked down, and then a group of people came over and were kicking him on the right. Ground. Um, so Jack will will kind of squat down next to him and and. Uh, will just kind of like nudge your 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 face with a, a gentle like like back of the fingers slap you uh you okay down there logan mother fuckers oh this is why i don't do turf wars man yeah but turf wars do you you know like you gotta scrap it's just part of the deal yeah but i he is he is like barely holding himself together there's blood out of several scrapes on his face and bruising and and it's it's not pretty um uh, jack will like lean over and kind of like like firemen carry you um just kind of hulking him up he's uh, he's a little bigger than you i'm, I'm envisioning yeah. like you know not like like maybe like a half a head taller and and just actually has some muscle maybe some scars like on his mm -hmm. knuckles and he's kind of hoists you up so like so what did you do wrong 
I underestimated the fucking short kid. You did. So how he climbed up, climbed, climbed up on you and how he like got all, all up in your space. You got to make room. You got to push him away. You got to fucking get something, a hand, a knee, anything between you and him. Make some distance. Then open up. Every time I fucking tried, it's like I backed into another one of his goddamn buddies. That's why you need me. You do not need to go off on your own again. I wasn't even trying to get into this shit, dude. I was just trying to go find somewhere to fucking sleep. Yeah, and that's when they get you, when you're least expecting it. Come on, we'll get you patched up. You ain't dead. I fucking feel like I am. We'll limp off into the into the waterlogged streets of Seattle, uh, looking for some sort of walk-in clinic to get him actually fixed up. Yeah, and as you guys walk off into the streets, uh, we we whoosh back into the time, and you engage your pile bunker. Go ahead and make your roll. Is uh, so I do have the forceful martial arts tag, uh, okay. or not for not tag the gift, uh, and I would like to attempt to. Does that automatically apply those levels, or do you have to actually invoke it? No, you, it automatically applies them, I believe. Okay, so um i have two dots of it so i would like to attempt to use the deadly strike it's going to add a plus one complication but if successful uh i would uh get the brutal tag on my head okay does the pile driver not already have brutal? i think it does no because i build mine oh okay gotcha. mine has heavy and destructive it does not have brutal. okay cool cool uh, okay, that so is four plus five, nine successes. It would have the brutal tag, and uh, because of power blow, I would also have the uh, number of successes, or I would also have the weighted tag. Okay, noted. Okay, so total, what's the total power scale of this? Total power scale, the heavy adds one to it, It right? does, yes. So that would make it a scale three, I believe? Okay. Good. Uh, okay, so uh, and your total successes with enhancement? Total in sex with enhancement is nine. Nine? Okay. Uh, yeah, you mm -hmm. manage to um, it, it is like as you are like pile driving it like you feel it connect and like you feel it's it's familiar in the, the effect that it has uh, mm -hmm. Like, you're pretty sure that this thing has some sort of shielding around it, um, but you punch through that, make contact, and uh, and throw the thing off, and it sort of latches itself onto the side of the building and begins to, like, slink out of view. Did I, did I like, just meet, or did I... No, you, you like, like you, you, feel, you felt yourself push through that shielding and, like, okay. make, make contact. It, uh, but it, it it's hard to tell how damaged it is from as a result of it. But it did get thrown off of you. Okay, so I can see again. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and spend whatever movement I can spend to to retreat further back with Lash. Okay. Our goal is protect the beacon. Okay, so you're so you're moving back towards Lash. Okay, got it. Got yeah. It. Um. Uh, which is uh, appropriate because Lash, I need you to roll defense for me, please. Mm -mm. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one success. One success. Okay. So you got two defense. Mm -hmm. Uh. All right. Hold on one second. Uh. Big burly plastic man is launching another uh, shrapnel blast your way. Um, uh, let me make a roll here. Uh, two defense. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Uh, what's your durability scale? Uh, 
Um, I apologize. I don't know. It's two. It's two. Yeah, We're all two. Base two. would yep. be two. Yep. Uh, okay. Noted. Uh, so that's not entirely pathetic on my part. Um, uh, let's see here. So it's got five enhancement. Um, uh, what is your soft armor? Uh, four base, and I believe it is currently enhanced um, by someone's else's yeah, so thing. Yeah, it should still be uh, at a plus three for right. um, that. So that's seven. Um, if I have uh, some of the points, the two points that I had created for all of us, I'll use mm -hmm. them for laughs uh, to get uh, that to him. You don't need to. Okay. Uh, it does not hit, it does not breach your soft armor. Right. Uh, however, you are going to have a level three complication of pin down. Okay. Uh, so pin down your next your next uh, action. Uh, you'll need to buy that off or automatically play, take a point of damage. Got it. Describe how I'm pinned down, if you could. So yeah, he, it is just like opening up this cavity on its its big burly plastic self and just sending out shards of, of plastic and metal to kind of just pepper the area that you're in. Got it. So it's kind of uh, I'm kind of covered in yeah. various plastic bits. Okay. Well, no, it, it's it's more along the lines of like you you're under the cover that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. but if you try to move out of it to do something, you'll catch one of them. Got it. I'd just like to point out that Laughs probably has ways to deal with that complication really easily. I mean, but... that's good, but you still oh. have the complication. That's fair. If you can overcome it, then you can overcome it however you'd like. Cool. Um. Uh, but that will happen on your next action. Cool. Um, speaking of which, I have a final aberrant action, uh, which is going to be the spider who was done, gone, blown up, uh, is going to, let's see, uh, I think that's going to attack uh, Jude this time. Uh, so your defense, please. Uh, it'll be another uh, composure roll. Mm hmm. Ah, two successes, one of which is a 10. <laughs> so two successes. Uh, so I will be using one to purchase uh, the defense buff for, for this action. So uh, my defense is four, yes, plus uh, the one extra so, that I so, rolled. So your base, your I think it's five, because your base two, and then you spend one success to get two more. Mm -hmm. And then you spend another success to get one more. So your defense is five. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, okay. So that's five successes. Um, uh, uh, what is your soft armor? Uh, it should be in the Kingfisher. Um, five. Five uh, plus, plus uh, three. No, no. It's two plus three. So a total of five. Total of Do five. you have okay. armor expert? Yes. Wait, let me check. Doesn't that add an extra? It does. I do have armor expert. So six. Six. Uh, okay. Six. Okay. Six soft armor. Okay. Um, all right. I am going to spend another corruption because uh, it once again, like this isn't coming for you in terms of um, like to do damage. It's just trying to touch you. Uh, it's trying to do that that creepy thing with the the one one finger down the side <laughs> of your cheek, uh, where you know uh, it just gets creepier and creepier. Uh, but it does successfully touch you, which is bad. Bad touch. Uh, yeah, your um, uh, your dex, your stamina, and uh, close combat all go down by. Uh, so that is the end of our second of six rounds. We're going to go ahead and take our break right now. See you guys in a bit. Welcome back to Simulacra Studios presents Trinity Continuum Aeon Varg Force Salvation, the finale. 
so yes, we are at top of the round of round three out of six of calibrations, uh, and I have a PC turn. I would like to go ahead and lay claim to that. Having watched this spider mess up my friends, I want to mess up the spider creepy eldritch horror thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be pretty basic. I want to shoot it with my flamethrower. Okay. Um, uh, I would like to, to point, as we are reaching the desperate hour, uh, to remind everyone that we do have the leaf on the wind mechanic in full effect. Uh, such as if you just wish to declare that your character will die at the end of the action, uh, you can make whatever you want happen without having to result to dice rolls. Um, so that is something that's on the table for everyone. Uh, but yeah, so um, let's go ahead. You want to make that attack roll? Yep. Um, we don't have any additional difficulty for just shooting a gun, right? No, nope. shooting a gun's pretty good. Okay. So nine uh, successes and it does have the heavy weapon tag okay nine successes against this thing very good uh, it has heavy weapon uh, incendiary and area of effect so that is all very good for dealing with this monster um, okay 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 nine successes plus four um, to nine total with enhancement nine total with enhancement Okay, uh, so you are able to hit it and crit it pretty bad. Um, yeah, yeah, you you burn away through it uh, like an orc with a heavy flamer. Just <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, you burn the shit out of that motherfucker. Uh, it's still you know you know there's about maybe about seventy five percent of its mass is still still here, mm -hmm. um, but it is uh, very badly injured with that. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to have another aberrant attack, uh, in which case I believe I will have, go through my options here, yeah, uh, I will have an aberrant who hasn't shown up yet uh, appear, uh, sort of uh, coming out of a shimmer high above you. Um, uh, you uh, um, see this feminine figure. You have to do a double take because it almost looks familiar um, until you realize that whoever this is has shaped her body in such a way to be a parody of the Scarlet. Um, you know, a slightly different shade of red, uh, longer, droopier feathers. Um Clearly, there's some sort of drama in beef that hopefully, you know, maybe one day we'll be able to get into. Uh, but she um, uh, sends out this pulse of energy from herself uh, that seems to wash over uh, all of her companions. Uh, some of the uh, horde um, gets bathed in this energy, and you see them, those that have been damaged, start to reconstitute themselves a little bit uh, as she blasts out a quantum wave that seems to restore her allies. Uh, and I have another PC turn. Uh, I, oh, well, if you're trying to talk, um, that was not fair of her. Um, unless somebody wants to go, I'm going to shoot her out of the sky. Do it. Go right ahead. Do it. Do it. All right, so now that it take, took a turn for me to reload the rifle, mm -hmm. I'm going to sort of take a step back from McCall and aim up at uh, the mauve. That's what I'm or sorry, the maroon, the mauve, whatever you want to call her, the not scarlet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, fire off the cannon, but I'm also going to use my ultimate attack. Uh, the uh, 1000 cuts. Okay. I have to spend a Psy and roll up Psy plus Translocation. I, I have an alternate image for you there. Um, instead of taking a step back, I'm picturing for, uh, you've seen Mad Max Fury Road. Yes. Remember when Furiosa uses Max as a bipod <laughs> to shoot it? At, um, I imagine that's what Wu does, and it's just like, hold still for a second. Oh, 
So first comes the side roll. Which does nothing. So I was not able to uh, teleport my shell through her multiple times. Oh. I just uh, hit her, hopefully, with um, eight successes. Eight successes. Gotcha. Uh, and what's the power scale of that um, weapon? Uh, depends if I can spend a momentum or not. Go ahead. Four. Four? Okay. Uh, okay, so that is plus four, uh, plus two, so 10 successes. Um, minus her defense is five. Um, uh, yeah, you, uh, you land a, uh, a blow on her, uh, that seems to knock her, uh, to the side a bit. Um, uh, it's at this point that we are going to pan up from this combat. Uh, our our camera moves faster and faster and faster up the citadel's uh, walls, uh, up the 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 ever uh, dwindling uh, thickness of the spire until we reach the cancer mass body of the colony, uh, who having been distracted by a thermonuclear explosion uh, around uh, in his in his domain has finally been able to discern that there is something happening at the base of the spire. And one of its sphincter orifice openings starts to widen as a mass of tumorous flesh starts to push itself out uh, and eventually uh, breaks free of the flesh tension holding it back uh, and begins first under the effect of gravity itself, then as quantum uh, quantum energy starts to boil around it and acceleration um, builds and builds and builds uh, until such time as a being the size of a small city lands. You know, accuracy really doesn't matter when you're that big, um, but close enough to uh, send every being in the area um uh uh knocked back a range band um unfortunately our spider friend being covering so much mass utterly gets squashed um the other aberrants are able to get out of the way but that one is just gone uh the horde <laughs> the horde is also mostly squashed but the ones that aren't are liquefied by the emanations of quantum energy just roiling off of this thing um and uh you are now confronted with a scale six sized aberrant monster um your vargs are all stunned for one round but inside you are not um uh so it, as it seems to be taking a turn to uh to reorient itself uh, and get ready to do whatever horrible shit that it's about to do. Uh, so uh, we have a PC turn. So with, I, I started the turn, right? You so started the turn. Okay. Right? And just for reference, size Godzilla is about a size four. Yeah, no, this is the size of a small city. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, there's just this this like towering mass at the base of this uh, this this thing. It, it is it is who knows why it how it didn't like ended up just annihilating you. Um, it just aimed it, its aim was off for some reason. Uh, Otha Herzog using a using a power. Um, uh, but yeah, so I have a PC turn. Um. Given that this thing has almost certainly come from the colony's like central processing unit, I can. I uh, Jude's got a pretty good idea that he can distract it with his own presence, and so I will open up every broadcast channel my Varg can 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 access, including my own like transmission, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going going to call out, "Hey, fuckface." 
It's me you want, isn't it? Come and get me. One of one of its sensory organs that you can see on this side of it orients itself to look at you. Uh, I have another PC turn. I'd like to take it. Okay. Um, but I think I would like to to trigger uh, one of my flashbacks if I can. Uh, okay, so you're <clears throat> triggering a reverie. What are what are you acting? Um, what's your action that you're supporting with this reverie? Um, I am. I think the action that I'm trying to support with this is to try to shake off being stunned so that I can actually take advantage of the uh, distraction that mm -hmm. you just did for the colony. Okay. And so, okay. So if you're trying to shake it. it off, it's probably going to be an integrity roll. Okay. Okay. Noted. Okay. So you're stealing yourself, shaking off the cobwebs in your own head. Um, and we, we get a, a moment of going, going inside that the whoosh, uh, as you're trying to focus on your head and your, your thoughts, uh, and please set up the scene for us. Um, so the scene is, um, it's going to be in a, a classroom for much, it looks like a classroom for, um, essentially officers training school, um, or the equivalent of it for the Aeon Trinity. Um, and it is after hours it is late. No one else is there except for Raphael at 19 years old. And he is sitting across um, from a table. Uh, he's sitting across the table from a woman um, who is a lieutenant, a military tactics instructor. Um, and between them is a board of the uh, Japanese game Go. All right. You've been quiet today. Unfortunately, I have a lot on my mind. Um, I'm hitting that point, he'll make a move where I have some decisions that I need to start making. Yeah, well, I I know we've talked about it before, and I really think that you need to consider all of your options. Uh, I know you have, I know you have what you think is the right path in front of you, and I just, I don't know, I, I Do you really feel that your skills are going to be best suited being some stick jock? I mean, out in the field? It's your move. How many times have you asked me that question? 17, she says as she as she places down a stone and threatens uh, a very fundamental aspect of your defense. Seventeen, and every single time I bring this up, and he will bend that off that move quickly with a stone of his own. Every single time you bring that up, it seems like it just takes longer and longer and longer for me to get any any answers. I mean, bureaucracy being what it is, even with all the efficiencies we have paperwork takes time and uh, it's not a counter move it is a distraction move that three months ago would have totally like broken your calm bureaucracy does move unfortunately slowly unless you know the right people her eyes narrow it can move slower or it can move quicker and he will make a move that is more aggressive than any moves he's ever made in their previous history playing with each other. See, this is what I'm talking about, Raphael. 
out there in the world with your hands on a joystick in some godforsaken locale going wherever it is that Eon wants to send you and I will place down a, a, a stone that build it's building momentum towards something. Um, all you have is you. listening, but he will place another. All you have is you and whatever rickety bucket they have decided to requisition you. Another stone goes down. And in those moments, you will find that your tactical limitations are severely limited. What I am trying to help you understand is that there is a bigger place for you in this world. Another stone goes down. A bigger place for me, another stone, in the smallest possible fucking place I could ever be in. Stuck behind a desk, stuck behind a screen. Where Never seen make... the light of day half of the fucking time. And you can make the moves that really matter. And I place another stone. Again, like, this time, the, the next stone will be the attack. Mm -hmm. Raphael, I can do this all day. You could. Three months ago, you could. And there is a final stone placed. And the but you're not paying attention right now. And it is decisive. You're not able to make your grand maneuver come to pass because you've been end run around. And we'll zoom back out to chaos and confusion. Uh, as the you know the dancing lights in your head, Raphael. Um, uh, so are you you're attempting to overcome the complication and do an action as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, what? So, if you just want to clear your head, it would be an integrity roll. What additional action would you like to make? Like what? What is the the thing you want to do this turn? Well, um. I'm not sure that you're going to let me do it, but let's find out anyway, right, guys? We'll see. I'd like to spend a point of inspiration and fire uh, at the colony. Um, and specifically, the point of inspiration would be to use the bigger they are. Okay. Um, I will say that, yeah, I, I will basically say that there are two complications that you would have to overcome. The stun complication... Um, which is a uh, is it's going to be another two. So you'll have to make a total of four successes to overcome both of your complications okay. in order to make an attack roll. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, what is the yeah? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and and make that roll, and let's see what how that shakes out. Okay. Um, which one of these am I rolling one more time? Uh, so okay. Um, it's just, it's, if you're just firing at it, it's going to be an aim roll. Okay. Yeah, I can I can do that. Why not? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mildly, mildly frightened by doing this, but here we go. Um, and the bonus from the uh, uh, reverie scene? Uh, it's going, uh, uh, that was a pretty good one. I like the back and forth of that. I will say that it's both target number nine, seven uh, and nine again. Excellent. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, hold that thought real quick. Between the sheer number of nines I have rolled, um, and the successes um that is six successes 
Okay. My six, friends. Six, six successes and you use bigger, bigger they are uh, yes. to um, uh, do that. Okay. Uh, and the bigger they are is uh, when in conflict with an opponent of higher scale than you, reduce the difference in scale between you by your highest inspiration facet. Okay. Uh, so you have a diff uh, so you have a four difference in scale, uh, which normally would mean you wouldn't be able to do anything against this thing. Um, so and what I is happen your to have a four in okay. my highest facet. So you completely neutralize the scale between the two of you. Um, does your weapon have the heavy tag that you're using? Um, let's find out. Really I don't think he can gain scale through this. Oh, he, can't. he can oh, only okay. equal it. He can only equal it. Okay. Noted. Okay, so you are at you are at at perfectly equal scale. Um, uh, for all of its terrible presence, this thing only has a soft armor of two. Um, the do you have the brutal tag though? I do not. Well, um, actually, hmm. What weapon is it? Question: What's my range with this thing right now? Uh, I mean, it's so big you can like. There's there's nothing that you can't hit from it. So the pull would have been the same for my uh, for me to use my vibro blade, which does okay. have that. Okay, cool. Then yeah, Why not? you're able. You just impossibly chew through this thing, uh, like it, it's like hardened ex uh, uh, exterior, like a just like scab and and just terrible skin, and you draw. You actually draw blood. Uh, from this thing. You see this terrible oozing ichor come out. Uh, and that is your turn. Uh, and uh, let's go with the next PC turn. Um, I believe that is laughs is our last one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before you have your go, um, I need to ask you a question. The crystal that you pried away from the cave, uh, what did you do with that? It is still in the Varg with laughs. Okay. So as you are like just trying to overcome the confusion as like your Varg isn't moving from the shock of the fear, sheer force of kinetic impulse and influx of, of uh, corruption, um, you see the crystal floating free uh, right across one of your sense organs. Um, and you just notice that there's a thing in your console that's always been there. It's been just like an indentation. And you notice that that crystal would perfectly fit into that console. Yeah. Laughs, grabs it, and slams it into the spot. And you are not here anymore. Your clairsentient vision overtakes you. Uh, and you are in, in a hall of mirrors. You see reflections of possibilities of times... Um, but in the mirror right in front of you, uh, you see the reflection of Otha Herzog. Has Laughs ever had contact with, with uh, the Clairsentience proxy before? No. So you look at him and he is looking at you. And, you know, as you are, you know, you see sort of the reflections behind you. Normally when you look into a mirror, you just see, you know, uh, you know this infinite reflection, but you see alternately him, you, him, you, him, you. And you understand that you are standing in the present looking forward while he stands in the future looking back. And through the reflection, he says to you, it is time then, isn't it? I think so, old man. I think it is. And he says, I hope that this conversation comes to pass one day. But in the meantime, I have but one piece of wisdom for you. Sometimes the greatest harmony can be found in a closed fist. And he indicates behind you. And you are able to orient yourself and you look into the reflection behind you. And you see a series of, uh, a sequence of colors arranged. Uh, and you snap back into your Varg. 
uh, and you see that around the focus, the, around the crystal, there are a series of colored um, uh, buttons that have sort of become illuminated. Never knew this was there before. It looks like those buttons all need to be pressed with all arms, right? Exactly, they do. Yeah. So laughs will get into position and do so, um, hitting all the buttons with all their hands, all their, you know, mm -hmm. pointers. Manipulators. Yep, manipulators. There Appendages. we go. Appendages. Mm -hmm. All right. So first on your screen and then on everyone else's screen, uh, a... a text uh, block appears. Uh, I'm going to send it to you all, but I want Josh to be the one that reads it. In Laugh's voice? <laughs> uh, mm, no, it could be Josh's voice. Darn. <laughs> Sorry, Scott, how am I supposed to read this? From top to bottom. Okay, just making sure I understood. Mm -hmm. You all hear over your communicator's laughs, kind of sp speaking. Condition Titanfall met. Proxy Aeon Council's override. Babel dossier asset 117 approved. Signatories, O. Harsok, M. Zwiedler, G. Del Fuego, S. Larson, B. Atwan, S. K. Barano, M. D. Donegal, W. Stiles, S. Rousseau, N. Arcer, Archer, M. Mercer, M. A. Mercer. God is in their heaven. All's right with the world. And Laugh's Varg begins to act on its own accord. Its tendrils reaching out to each one of your own Vargs, pulling you into it as a massive uh, pulse of psi energy starts to radiate out and your Vargs all merge into one scale six mega Varg. Oh my uh, fucking God. <laughs> uh, yes. um, Fuck so, you, we're Voltron. <laughs> uh, you no longer are piloting an individual Varg. You all have action stations. Uh, there are five action stations. There is, uh, there is primary weaponry. Uh, secondary, uh, um, two secondary weaponries. Uh, there is navigation and support. Uh, and so this is essentially is you are all sort of acting as one um, to deal with the problem. Uh, I'll so, form the head. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> all of your weapons are available. Um, uh, as as attachments on this Varg. They have quanta connectedly uh, expanded in their own size. Their own matter has been in, enhanced. Um, uh, and a, uh, a countdown uh, that corresponds with three rounds uh, is, is emblazoned on every uh, tactical outlook. Uh, so, okay. So that was a PC turn. Um, Let's see here. Uh, yeah, so the two aberrants on the field uh, are, they are also stunned this round. The three remaining aberrants on the field are also stunned this round. Uh, so we are going to go up to the top of the round. Uh, and who would like to go in what action station? Do, are they the same every turn or can they switch from turn to yeah, turn? They can switch. It's the same, it's the same sort of initiative order. Um, but you do need to lock down which action station you're you're okay. you're uh, uh, getting in now. I'm Can I cut this thing? Support one. Can I cut this thing since I don't have my close combat nerfed? Any objections? No, no, go right ahead. Go ahead. What what melee weapons do we have? A plasma sword and a vibro blade. Yes. A bio yeah. bunker. Two bio bunkers actually. Um, 
Mine is a little different. Um, it has the heavy and destructive. I guess which qualities. one's cooler? Vibra <laughs> Blade or Vibro Sword? Vibro Sword, probably. I'm 99% sure that that is correct. Um, All right. So aw. mentally, I guess <clears throat> Wu reaches to wherever the Vibro Sword should be, pulls yep. it out, and. Our heart out's very soon, right? Yeah, it's getting returns. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with the referee. Mm-hmm. So this weapon has brutal, deadly, destructive two, melee, two handed, and varg scale tags. All and right. It's got uh, enhancement of five. Well, I think the varg scale would go away. I think we're. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it. yeah, it gets what it gets. Megazard mm-hmm. scale. Are we mentally connected or anything? Um, not via a mental link, um, but you do sort of have like speed of speed of thought communications through the Varg. Because it's all bio Vargs. I mean, <clears> yeah, it's all bio Vargs. Like it's it's all one single organism of which you are all a part of. So while you have like the speed of thought communication, you just you don't have like the other benefits of being in a in a mental link. All right. So he draws the sword. Washi Feng Zhong de Yetza and slices it down. Uh, that is Chinese for I am a leaf on the wind. Ah, okay. So describe what happens. Uh, the sword vibrates at such a force that the buildings nearby start to crack. The weather is slightly shifted from now a sword that is almost a kilometer long and then it impacts with the flesh of the colony as all of the hatred that uh, Cesar had towards the aberrants and all of the faith he has in his team to finish this mission pours through the sword and into the colony as he slices downwards through it and into the earth. Well, into the surface of the planet and then Mega Prime. has to uh, stop there because okay. his heart gives out. Yeah. So, yes, you cut through this absolute monstrosity uh, doing unbelievably massive damage to it um uh even with that strike it is so big and so massive that cutting through vital proportions of it it is like you essentially excise like a large portion of its tumor body uh causing it to just utterly bleed out uh, it's terrible, corrupted blood sprills everywhere, uh, and it starts to list over to one side. Uh, it is massively damaged, but still up. Uh, as your guys' readings of Cesar's, uh, you know, axes start to fluctuate and then dwindle. Uh, I have another PC turn. Okay. So, um, laughs would like to spend all of their sigh, and in the dying moments of Cesar's life, link up and drain any sigh left in uh, in him, with the and and trying to pull on their noetic uh, ability to. Leafs on the wind situation here. <laughs> Ensure that we can move everywhere that the we physically teleport the entire Varg to key places around the battlefield, stomping, slashing, cutting, and getting to the heart of this thing at the center of the planet as the last final moment, and then appearing back near the beacon. Okay, so you, uh, so I understand. Mm-hmm. You are you want to get to the the bunker. 
Yes. Um, if that's and, where the heart of this of the colony is, I mean, we well, still no. need to protect the beacon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you were just trying to kill the giant, massive thing that we're trying to kill, right? That's my that's my yeah. thought. Yes. Okay. 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 And using all noetic resources available, maybe even stealing some of Logan's through the bar. Where you are, I think he's basically trying to use what's left out of Wu's teleportation juice yep. to move this big old beefy boy through with, space. And with the idea that Laughs is capable of reaching out through clairsentience to the null point mm-hmm. of uh, the noetic space to do crazy psi stuff okay. once. If need be, um, I'm willing to contribute an inspiration for the dramatic editing to allow laughs to do this, if we're all speed of thought. Okay, here's what happens. You, yeah, you access uh, Wu's teleportation, um, you pouring everything into yourself. Um, you like, yeah, you are teleporting chunks of this being away, um, getting to the heart of it. Um, and for a moment, laughs, you are uh, out of your Varg. Like you just, you're just not in your Varg anymore. And this, you know, this isn't a vision. Mm-hmm. You know, this is real. Like mm-hmm. you have been teleported just out of the Varg system. Um, and as like this thing is just becoming chunks as like uh, Wu's teleportational energy uh, is tearing it apart, uh, destroying it. Um, Laughs, you find yourself alone in a chamber deep beneath the earth. Uh, And you see a person-sized man suspended in this large, very like thick reinforced a tank full of liquid uh and like you see it, its eyes are open and it, it's it's panicked um and you lock eyes with it for a moment and you feel that sort of like that reflection of recognition um of yeah, yes this is what we're looking for uh and the defenses in this chamber come online and melt you Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you so this this giant aberrant torn apart by the efforts of uh, laughs and Wu um, uh, is just utter chunks. Uh, it, there, some of them are still wiggling, but there seems to be just not connection enough for it to to actually bring anything to bear. Um, I have a PC turn. Is it still alive and capable of threat? No, it is it is it is still moving as a result of just the sheer power and energy that flows through with it, but it does not seem to it is literally like a like 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 it's uh, twitching. It's, it's a twitch not... it's it's in its death twitches. Gotcha. Yeah. And um okay. And what are the dimensions of the spire that uh, that that the space tower goes up? Um the dimensions of it? I mean yeah. it, it it goes real far up. Like, I mean, it goes up into uh, the upper edges of the atmosphere. Uh, you guys are pretty big, so you guys probably go up halfway, uh, halfway up the spire. Uh, I would like to uh, take a turn with the uh, with uh, the Vibra Blades um, and start hacking into the the base of the uh, of the of the spire okay. to try and and further disrupt and deny. The enemy, this this obviously asset. important asset. Yeah, go Y'all ahead. Not with your vibro blades. I'm over here like a pile bunker. Do it <laughs> real good. Uh, well, yeah. actually, wait. Um, uh, My pile I'll, bunker has heavy, so it's one scale above us. 
is that what you want to do? Because I have a thing that I would like to do, but um, it requires oh, no. their... I was I was going to to burn the last of my resources and murder the other two aberrants that are there. Mm. I mean, they're still here and they've got turns. They do. Do mm. do, do do your thing, murder it. Okay. Um, then yeah, I will. Uh, I, I will. I will uh, grab. Uh, the, the Vibra Blade and sort of just continuing the momentum of uh, Cesar's strike. Um, uh, I will hack into the side of the, uh, uh, of the, of, of the, of the tower. Okay. Uh, make an attack roll with close combat. So my decks and, and close combat have been reduced. So I'm using the reduced values. Yes. So that's five and three. So that's an eight. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, Eight and uh, that's it. So eight d ten. Oh, thank God! That is three successes, one of which is a ten, three, and a two. So uh, three uh, plus five uh, for the blade itself. Um, so that is uh, eight. Uh, eight total. Okay. Yeah, you lay in massive damage. Uh, cutting cutting uh, into the support structure. Um, you almost like cut clean through it as the blade kind of get lodged in like this central uh, column of, of like super dense, like quantum enhanced titanium. Uh, but yeah, bone. <laughs> yeah, bone titanium. Yeah, but yeah, you dig hard into it causing massive damage. Um, and okay, uh, I'll have the final PC turn if anyone wants to take it. Uh, uh, I will snag it if I haven't gone this round. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think you have. I have. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use Hellscape again. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go ahead and roll that. That is seven successes. Um, and because I can use any of my um, powers, I am in this time going to be using the uh, temperature extremes power mm -hmm. on the two aberrants that are still standing. Okay. Um, and if I don't kill them with the successes I got, I will drain my side pool to do so, and I have 10 side left. Okay. Uh, uh, so it is just constant blast, 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 as he just wails in on these two, trying to make them a non-existent threat, melting their very molecules down into nothing. Um, yeah. Uh, as you are just pulling all of your psi into it, uh, you guys have such massive scale over this thing, uh, um, you are able to uh, burn all your resources into just lighting these remaining aberrants and melting them into nothing. Uh, um, clarify, is this a leaf on the wind situation? No, this okay. is not. This okay. is this is before, if we're still not done, if there's still another okay. boss, right. if the Latin music starts playing. <laughs> um... Okay, no, no. The, so yeah, you liquefy these remaining aberrants. Um, there, uh, so yeah, that is uh, our, uh, our our round. You guys have two two more rounds uh, before this beacon activates. Uh, you're down two people. Uh, all of the active threats in this current um, theater have been eliminated, but more are most certainly coming. Um, uh, but you have, I would say. Mm, yeah, if anyone wants to throw anything out here uh, to uh, to try and, and buy yourselves two rounds. Uh, How much side did I burn? Oh, you burned all of them. You burned all, all of them? them? Yeah. Okay. Darn. No more maze. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's all gone. It is a, you are in a, a utterly blasted hell side. Yeah. So, yeah. So... Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're kind of in a lull. There's a pause. More enemies are certainly coming their way. Um, does anyone have anything that they think could, could buy these two turns outright? So, 
if Raphael wants to use one for one and I can use one for mine, um, we both have access to uh, dramatic editing. Okay. Um, Using tactics, not my inspiration. Ah, yes, that's true. So literally, we can, it's not a reverie, but it is a flashback to us, like, talking about, you know, a a plan mm -hmm. um, that we can have a very brief scene with, if you're okay with that, sure. without using yeah. it to buy those turns. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so what if we Voltron? What do we do then, guys? <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing, but if we find ourselves in a lull, um, uh, there are a couple of different ways that we can position ourselves. There, there's there's like, I mean, it really depends on, on what's coming at us, but we're going to assume I this mean, is going to be a full theater overkill here. Yeah. If we I get mean, a few moments to think, I can ensure that no matter what happens, we will move in perfect synergy. I okay. can take the scuttling charges. I'm assuming Vards have scuttling charges, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can take them and turn them into landmines. Yes. That would do it. If you can do a dispersal, like remote command, like we all can just kind of like eject ours <laughs> out, we could do a dispersal pattern. That would buy us a little time. Yeah. And drop them during the descent and don't actually prime them until you know we can prime them remotely well and we can prime them remotely or make them proximity based i can do both yes um my expertise as a demolitions um uh, sergeant comes in handy there perfect um, perfect all right now about the entry vector yeah and we'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to it and yeah the boring part <laughs> yeah. so with these landmines and charges and you guys forming like a perfect defensive perimeter uh you guys hunker over this um uh the beacon for two more rounds ho holding off uh all of the hordes that are incoming as the warp points start to form all around you uh and you get the ding of the beacon Reaching full <laughs> activation. Calibration meter goes finally all the yeah. way up. Boop. And there is a massive sigh pressure wave uh, that um, uh, that pushes out uh, uh, physically and psionically uh, around this beacon, uh, like buffeting like the aberrants with its pure assertion of the noetic totality. Um, and light years away all of the the color sentience and and other scions are focused in intent moment they know that this is the moment because the old man knew that this was the moment uh and uh they begin to scan and analyze every inch of this uh the spire uh, the underground facilities, all of the facilities around, they're collating their visions, getting sorted into uh, focus crystal recording devices uh, for later analysis. And in a secluded chamber, uh, somewhere in the heart of the moon, three figures, um, Otha Herzog, Matthew Zwiedler, and S.K. Verano, have linked their own psychic capabilities together. Uh, and have pinpointed the chamber uh, where Laughs saw uh, what the face of the true enemy was. And with it's all of their chamber. psychic might together, uh, it is absolutely revealed that this is not just a reconnaissance, uh, reconnaissance mission, but an assassination mission. Uh, as they... Combining their vitakinetic, quantakinetic, and clairsentient uh, strike team just snuff out the life of the last remaining body of the colony that has a, a sliver of capital I inspiration, uh, which, it, it, which it uses to avoid death whenever one of its main bodies is destroyed, and it is immortality is stripped away. And the mission is a success. And we have three heroes left on Vega Prime. How does the story end? 
Well, our transport is still on station. We all knew how this was going to end up. Doesn't have to end that way. In the words of a classic piece of literature, uh, fuck that, I'm living. Okay. Mm. So you all live. Uh, your pilot, uh, Void Dancer, uh, you know, Indigo Void Dancer, uh, comes with our new AI friend. Yeah. I, I, along with hmm? for, for flavor purposes, mm -hmm. uh, do either of y'all's var Vargs have uh, um, flight capability? Mine yeah. does. Mine does not. Mine has big mantis wings. <laughs> so the three ones that can fly, we can once the once the timer is up and we separate, mm -hmm. assuming that doesn't just wreck our vargs. No, it does not wreck your vargs. You just sort of like discorporate and like like bubble out, uh, like you bud out of the main mass as it disintegrates into psimotes. Mm -hmm. Um. In our last couple moments of having that speed of thought connectivity, just for funsies, um, I'd like to ask if I can, if Jude and Logan can briefly see how Raphael perceives the world in terms of manipulating things to make sure that our ride can find us easily. Sure. Picking out yeah. a reality where we live. Yeah, um, as you guys are like lifting off, gathering us up, trying to to desperately get out of the uh, the the theater of combat that is quickly becoming overrun, um, you all receive feedback through the Varg system just as it begins to to break apart, um, and you see, uh, you know. You see the moment where you all die in a quantum blast from the colony. You see the moment uh, where, you know, each one of you is the lone survivor. Uh, a pair of you are the lone survivor. Um, uh, are, are the terror, like, and like any, co all combinations of the three uh, of deaths and survival until you see the moment of the transport uh, piloted by your kin uh, ally uh, snaking its way through the defenses, impossibly. Uh, uh, avoiding every single hit as it screams down and telekinetically grabs you. Um, and then all of those visions sort of just collapse into, of course, that's what happened. Um, as it screams out, uh, barreling towards the aperture. Uh, and we end as the three remaining heroes uh, land quite hastily back in their calm little paradise. And that's the end of Varg for Salvation. Woo! Sorry, and I had a plan at the end too. <laughs> uh, it's okay. The greatest plans of players and the players and men. Uh, oh, all right. right. I, I, I was going to, that was when I was going to do my leaf on the wind. Yeah, um. yeah, that's fine. We're good though. Um, yeah, so everyone have fun with this campaign. Me. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great. Glad to hear it. Um uh you know what? We can do uh we can perform the ritual of XP uh on our on our own time. It doesn't really matter <laughs> at this point. Uh, but I just want to know if anyone has anything they would like to plug. I do have one thing I would like to plug. There is a Kickstarter for a game that I'm producing right now called Army Men. That if it is not on Kickstarter when this episode releases, the preview is. Uh, Army Men is a 5e game of plastic men um, fighting plastic monsters, including plastic wasp creatures. So um, if you've ever wanted to play a tabletop RPG where you get to be a plastic person, this is your chance. Cool. Anybody else? Yes, I um, do, actually. But go ahead. You first. Oh, I was going to say, I, I actually have something I would like to promote today. <laughs> um, the uh, Trinity, the Com Trinity the Continuum Player's Guide on Backer Kit only has a couple of days left. We've already met our minimum goals and we're at those stretch goal points, but like, go look at it. It has some fun. It has actual shark repellent, you guys. Like, go buy it just for that. <laughs> the memes alone. <laughs> I mean, I can count on how many fingers the times I'd wish I'd had shark repellent. <laughs> well, if you had shark repellent, you'd have one more finger to count on. There you go. Uh, all right, anybody else? I do actually. 
Uh, so everybody, not not only am I, as many of you already know, uh, a member of the uh, cast of ATL by Night, um, I have a couple of things to plug for you. Number one being that I am one of the founders of Cerberus Interactive Media. Uh, we are running in the 2024 uh, season for Midwinter Gaming Convention, two LARPs. Yes, I said two because we're insane. We are running Giovanni the Family Reunion, which explores the transition um, from the prior editions of the Clans of Death, so the Giovanni, the the uh, Harbingers of Skulls, the Samedi, into the V5 unified force that is the Hakata. We ran it last year. People had a really great time. We're running it again this year. All new characters for folks. Secondly, we are also running a really fun game that we have lovingly called the Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. where you, as the players, over actual breakfast, will take on the roles of ghouls, the servants of vampires, and... Uh, you will get to play out their trials and tribulations in a busy night after the last Elysium. Beyond that, sounds... that, I have one final thing to plug, because I believe this will be coming out after we have done the big, big announcement for it. But this year, in October, Service Interactive Media is partnered with Gehenna Gaming to bring you Camp Gehenna. Oh. I have been and waiting for that announcement. I'm very eager for this one. We are indeed running Camp Gehenna this year. Uh, you can go and sign up for updates at campgehenna.com. And since Cerberus involved, well, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, you know it's going to involve a LARP. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can't wait to hear more about that. I was a little worried. I was like, oh, October, I don't want something to conflict with the thing that I was already going to go to. But it was the same thing. Uh, Surprise! Oh, <laughs> anyone else have Real something? Real life dramatic to... editing. I know. Uh, anyone I have also have... something to plug? I have one other thing that I just remembered. OnyxCon is coming up here in June. Uh, yeah. June uh, 16th through the 18th. Sorry, I had to double check the date. Uh, you may or may not see some familiar faces, including mine probably being there at the very least running tech. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully actually participating in games this time though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, show up. It's fun. We have basically a weekend of game streaming for different systems that uh is going to be happening um, uh, i i also may be participating in that in some streaming capacity so look forward to that i am uh, expecting any... to be dragged into a cast at some point at some point um and, and, okay anything else to plug out into the world uh yes i do uh sorry i know this is this is kind of plug happy um but uh i will be participating in a charity stream uh it'll be uh i think this will be coming out before it happens uh yeah, this, this be... is releasing on the 20th perfect this is going to be sunday april 23rd uh uh 10 a.m eastern standard time um i'm going to be participating in a charity stream uh with uh the twitch channel tavernaut t-a-v-e-r-n-a-u-t I will be uh, one of several players uh, playing a game of witch familiars called Verhexed Nachmal uh, by one Brandy Rose. Um, really looking forward to it. It's going to be benefiting a couple of different charities. Um, and uh, yeah, tune in if y'all can. Um, I will try to make sure that Scott posts the details yep. later. Yep, those show notes, that, that, that'll that happen. Sean, anything from you? Uh, no, just my lake tree, which I'm sure you will be able to put in the show notes. It's already there. <laughs> All right. Well, that leaves it to me. Thank you so much for watching Vard for Salvation. I had a blast running it. I hope these guys had a blast playing it. And I hope you had a blast watching it. Uh, if you'd like to support the show or and the channel, uh, you can follow us here on Twitch and YouTube at Simulacra TV. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Simulacra RPGs. But the best way would be to go to patreon.com slash Simulacra Studios and become a patron. The biggest advantage of that is you gain access to our private Discord with you, where you get to chat with me and all past and present uh, uh cast members and have first opportunity at casting calls if you want to play games on this channel well this has been a fun one guys i look forward to it um to the next time around uh hopefully we'll have a chance to play with each other again but for now see you guys
Have a blast. And remember to keep your arms around the Trinity Continuum. Oh, wait, that's the other one. Fuck. Night, guys.